In this video, we take you to the world famous Thunderball Grotto. It's an underwater cave, perfect for snorkeling. And then we head over to our friend's boat for one last meal all together before parting ways and sailing in different directions. There was a bit of a shark feeding frenzy before we said goodbye to our friends. And then we set sail on a beautiful day in the Exuma Bahamas. I wanna go swimming in this right now. It's so beautiful. And that's what I'm gonna go do. I'm gonna go swim right in this a little bit. Well, we're about to go to uh, Thunderball Grotto. It's beautiful over there. Let's see if it's not super busy. Yeah, it busy. looked really busy a minute ago. Because unfortunately, there's only one slack tide. Like you know, it's at one o'clock, so like you could have gone at six a.m. or seven p.m. Right? So like the only time for today people to do it is at one o'clock. So well, there's a bunch of people over there. So I think we'll be okay even if we're a little after. Yeah, there's two boats over there right now. There was more earlier, but and we'll take you guys with us. But it's pretty nice having this. Well, except for jet skis, I hate jet skis. But uh, having this is your backyard, you know. Pretty cool. Giant turtle, literally like right there. I forgot my GoPro, so. Oh man, you missed it. Uh, there's a, uh, what is that right there? What? what it's what, a what? big, big fish. It looks like a tarpon. What? A huge tarpon. I forgot my GoPro, so I only use, have this camera to use underwater yeah. and it's not exactly easy to. I need a snorkel. To... Uh, what? Alrighty, snorkel. After Stephanie's swim, we loaded up in the dinghy to go meet with our friends and head over to Thunderball Grotto. It seemed like the water was getting warmer every day and the clarity was perfect. This was low tide, so you could swim into the cave without having to swim under, but at high tide, you definitely have to swim under to get through an opening. It's nice when it's slack tide at midday because you get the rays of light shining in. It's pretty fun to swim through some of the cave openings and you only need to be able to hold your breath for about 15 or 20 seconds. For the really brave, you can jump through the roof. It's a pretty neat experience and one that you must do when visiting the Exumas. Just for laughs, our friend Craig on Supernova towed us back to the boat. I started using my motor a little bit and then it, it pulled the motor out of the water. <laughs> oh no. Oh 
Alright, nice little day uh, Thunderball Grotto. We did some grocery shopping too, didn't bring the camera along, and then uh, now we're going to head over to the Neil 47, yes. uh, Katie and Craig. Yes, uh, all with our good friends. Yep. And then Megan and her husband now is now here, Jason, so yeah. see him. And then, because uh, I'm kind of splitting up tomorrow, I don't I know. know, Craig and Katie may join us on the way up to Shroud Key, but then we're probably splitting separate ways after that. Yeah, so we gotta get. Kinda... We only have like seven days to get there, six days, whatever, to get Wish the boat back to land. It's always that when you're down here, once you have like Buddy Boat or yeah. with your friends, you just don't want to leave, you know? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sad, but we're going to have a really good dinner tonight. Yep. Steaks, baked, double baked potatoes, going to make salad, and going to yep. make grilled asparagus. We're going to do all of that. So yep. we'll show you guys that later. Alrighty, let's uh, head on over, grab some wine, and go. Yep. And uh, stock up on your wine before you get to Staniel Key, because we run on wine. B Bobby did the, the liquor shopping, and he, oh. made, he made a little bit of a mistake. Well, I mean, we still, we, we bought four bottles of wine to last us until, you know, I don't know where we're going to get it again, but, uh, yeah, so it was, it's expensive down here. Like, uh, probably an $8 bottle of wine is 30 bucks here now. A case of beer is $69. It's crazy. Yeah. So if you're coming, planning on coming to the Bahamas and you're going to be here for a long time or even just a short period of time, stock up, before you get stock up on what you love and trust me, you're saving yourself a lot of money. Yep. I know I won't. We headed over to Supernova, which is a Neil 47, a slightly larger version of our own Neil 43. It was definitely time for happy hour. We had spent a pretty great week with our fellow cruisers on Jump Off and Supernova. Supernova might have a few toys on their boat. While the stakes were resting, it was Stephanie's first experience with VR. I mean, it's, it's like so when you take it your so when you fun. take it off, you're like, holy oh, shit! Well, cheers, guys! Cheers! Cheers! Uh, fantastic meal! Mm -hmm. Oh, my drink is fine. Cheers! Oh, that is yours. Sorry. <laughs> oh, this is mine. There you go. <laughs> and then it was my turn for VR. It was actually pretty cool. <laughs> Gotta say, this lens right here, thank you patrons also for helping us out with this. Uh, it's midnight right now, and yes, it is pretty much a full moon, but there's a cloud behind, uh, above, you know, between us and the moon right now. So that's how nice this uh, low light lens is. Pretty awesome. You can see the bottom of the sea at midnight. And it does help that there's no wind, it's dead calm, but pretty cool. It literally looks brighter in the viewfinder of the camera than it with my own eyes.
know what's sad? We gotta say goodbye to our friends today. No. So the guys on Supernova Nova and Jump Off, pretty fun. We had a no, good time. No, it was such a good time. I'm sad. It's but always nice when you meet other boaters, kind of buddy boat with, and you have a good time. It's fun. Yeah. I will say, like, I think a lot of the times we've sailed, we really haven't had a chance to, like, yeah. truly buddy boat, but yeah. this time we have, and it kind of makes you sad, like, we all have to separate, go separate ways. Down the road, I'm sure you'll meet, we'll meet up somewhere, we'll sail with them, or they'll sail with us, or meet, meet somewhere. I mean, I've done it where I met a guy in French Polynesia, like, five years later, he pulls up at the marina right next to me. Yeah, Gabriel. Yeah, so it's pretty, you know, you see him again. It just takes a while. But sometimes. also you make new friends. Yeah. Well, also, too, you meet new people as well, so it's really cool. So we're going to go into the Yacht Club for one last uh, little lunch, and then uh, we're going to go over to the fuel dock and get water and fuel, and then start heading north. Someone had been feeding the sharks, so they were in a bit of a frenzy. They're somewhat tame though, you can actually pet them. Then it was time to say goodbye to our friends. Hey, guys, good to meet y'all. Take you care. All right. Bye bye. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you yeah, too, Yoshi. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. 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 Somebody uh, hung some clothes out on the line without clothespins, and when the wind was calm, and then when the wind picked up, huh, it was kind of weird how stuff goes flying into the water. And then they're like, oh, it's too deep for me, I can't go get it. That might be me. That one? No. Mission accomplished. It was easy to get off the mooring and then a quick stop at the fuel dock to get fuel and water. A few minutes later, we were off the dock and headed out to sea. The winds were fairly light, but perfect for flying the spinnaker. This award-winning Neil 43 sure looks pretty out in this water. It would have been pretty hard to do this trip in any other boat. We averaged eight and a half knots down to the Exumas and we're looking forward to a nice, comfortable sail on the way back. If you'd like more information on the Neil line of boats, head over to Performance Yacht Sales at pyachtsales.com. Pretty nice out here. Oh, I love it. It's such a beautiful breeze. Yeah, it's only, there's only nine and a half knots. We're doing four and a half, yeah. uh, five, but yeah, we're gonna have to motor at some point. We'll never get there. It's just so beautiful, you yeah. know? You just look at this water. I want to jump in right now. Yep. Just, every time we do this, I want to just jump yeah. in. You drag behind it. I know, right? <laughs> Wait, yeah. that'd Actually, be I'm going to turn the blower off so it's a little bit... Well, the, the blower from the, for the motor was running earlier, so it was a bit annoying. But now it's just nothing but... Waves. Yeah. Sound of the boat moving through the water, pretty nice. Mm, it's so peaceful. I love it. And the water is just unreal. I mean, like... Just, I love it. It makes me want to cry sometimes, you know? 
No. What? What do you mean? I don't think I'm going to cry. It's always so beautiful. It is very beautiful. Just like you. Aww. Well, it's been a nice little sail. I wish we had maybe been able to leave a little bit earlier, but uh, so we could sail the whole way because I mean, it was nice and peaceful. But we still got 14 miles to go, and it's sunsets in two hours, so, you know, going five knots wouldn't have got us there. Uh, so we're motor sailing now, doing eight knots. Uh, so, you know, be there an hour and 40 minutes, something like that. So be there just before sunset and uh, spend the night there. Shroud Key, and then tomorrow we will uh, go, uh, there's like a little tidal river that goes through the whole island to a really cool beach. We're gonna take you there. Using the stern head. Just before sunset, it was time to furl the spinnaker. Hey, I heard you want to leave this place where we grew up. This old town, just put it all behind. Remember you. Always find somewhere to hide when we were kids so we could see and hear the water run. The river's gonna cry when you're gone. Yeah, it's pretty. Almost there. We got like two or three miles to go where all those boats are. Yeah, it would have been nice if we could actually sail the whole way, but I mean, okay. it would have taken another like two hours and we'd be after dark. So. If we had started a little bit earlier, we probably would have been able to. Sail the whole way, but. Eh, it took us longer to do a lot of other, you know, to get lunch took longer than I thought, to get fuel took long, you know, whatever. You know, saying goodbye to everybody yeah. too. So it's okay though, whatever. We're gonna show you guys tomorrow or whenever this video is constructed. Uh, what is it? The. Uh, yeah, so there's like a little tidal river that goes through the island. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I want to really see that. I hear good things about Shrub Key. So. Yeah. That's cool. All right. There's a lot of super yachts here. Yeah. By the way, the, the charts here, like the government charts and then the Navionics charts in the Bahamas are dog poop. They're awful. They're not even remotely accurate. Sometimes the Navionics, like the uh, the sonar charts, so those, those are the user ones, uh, like, you know, somebody has a sonar on their boat and they drive over an area, it'll send it in. Sometimes those are a little more accurate, but what I found is that seems to be pretty accurate is Aqua Map. It's an app. They're not a sponsor or anything. I'm just saying, like, that's been pretty accurate and the rest of them have not been so you know i, I kind of look at all three but i didn't generally tend to trust aqua map plus the explorer charts um are generally pretty good too It was a beautiful, calm evening, which turned into movie night. Thank you so much to all our new patrons last month. We could not do it without you. The river's gonna crap when you're gone, 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 gone. The river's gonna crap when you're gone, 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 gone. The river's gonna crap when you're gone, gone. gone. Gonna cry when you're